G'day and welcome to another Clontarf segment on Yarara to you. This week it's time for some more footy language. This is the segment where we see how coaching instructions can confuse some players because the English language has so many words and phrases in it that have more than one meaning. Let's have a look at how our player is confused by his coach's instructions. Alright Bomber, when you get out there today, yep. this is what we need. You can't be caught with the footy, so when you get it, quick hands. Quick hands. When there's a marking contest, yep. we need to see you get front and centre. We need to see you front and centre. Front and centre. Front no and worries. Center. And if you get a shot at goal, with these wind conditions today, from this pocket, go the banana. Go and get the banana. Okay. All right, you got it all? Yep, I've got it all. What is it? Quick hands. Front and centre. Banana. Go get them, bomber. This is it, Bomber! Don't get caught with the footy! Quick hands, Bomber! Quick hands, Bomber! Quick hands, Bomber! What are you doing, mate? Quick hands? Oh, that's not what I meant. In footy, the term quick hands is used to describe how a player can gain possession of the footy and dispose of it quickly in one swift motion. Bomber! Quick hands, Bomber! Quick hands, Bomber! Go! Oh, good quick hands! Bomber marking contest, front and centre bomber, show us your front and centre bomber, show us your front and centre. Front, what are you doing? Centre. Oh, oh, it's not what I meant. In footy, the term front and centre is used to describe how a player will position himself at the front and central to a marking contest. This is the best place to be to read the footy off hands. This is it bomber, get to the front and centre. Marking contest, front and centre, show us your front and centre. Good front and centre, Bomber. No. Right, bomber, have a shot. Go for the banana. Go for the banana, Bomber. Go for the banana. Bomber, what are you doing? I went for the banana and I got an apple too. Oh, no, it's not what I meant, mate. In footy, the banana is a kick, also called the check side. A right footer will hold the ball like that. The left footer like that. The aim is to make contact with the ball there and this will cause it to bend in flight, a bit like the shape of a banana. Players often use this kick to kick goals from tight angles. Oh my, go for the banana from there, go for the banana! Oh, great banana! Welcome to another Clontarf Yara to You segment. Today we're going to be doing three fielding positions. And as before, we're going to find out how confusing the English language can be. Oh. New batsman, fellas, new batsman. I reckon fly slip, Stan. Fly slip? Yep. Got, Got you, Skipper. What skip? What's what are you doing, Stan? Fly slip. Fly slip is a position located behind the stumps, about 20 metres at a 45 degree angle. It's a position that could be used to take a wicket or conserve runs. Stan, fly slip, please. Got it, skip. Short leg. Yep, short leg. All right, got, got, got you, Skipper. Yep, short leg. Yep, stand. Stand. What, Skip? What are you doing? Short leg. Uh, 
Short leg is a position on the leg side, generally to crowd a wicket. It's there if he fends off and pops it up. Short leg, I reckon. Get in under it. Easy wicket. Fellas, another one to get into. Let's send him back. Silly point, I reckon, Stan. Silly point. Yep, silly point. Silly point. Righty-o, Skip. Gotcha. Yep. Stan. Sam. What are you doing? Silly point. Pretty silly one. Silly point is close in on the offside and there to crowd a wicket off either slow or fast bowling. It is highly recommended that the fielders have protective gear. Stan, I reckon silly point. No worries, Skip. Get right. Once again, we can see how confusing the English language can be. The message we're trying to get across, if you don't know, ask. Whether that's on the sporting field, the classroom, or the workforce. Yeah, if you don't understand, don't be a silly stand, just put up your hand. Good morning, Mr. Shane. Good morning, Mr. Mark. If we are going shopping, can you guess how much things cost and use different currency, our coins and notes, to be able to pay for them? What do you reckon the Milo costs? The Milo, I reckon will be $5.50. So that's a $5 note. And one fifty cent coin. Good. Five dollars fifty. Because it's only a, a small bottle of water, I reckon that will cost two dollars fifty. All right. So one two dollars. Right. And one fifty cents. So that together is two dollars fifty. And what about my favourite to have for breakfast in the morning? Toby's oat. Because it's such a large package. Uh, I reckon that'll cost $25.50. Ooh. So, one $20 note, one $5 note, and one 50 cent, which equals to $25.50. What about your cuddly toy for sleeping at night? This little guy here, I reckon will cost $15. Yep. So we'll get a $10 note. Yep. A $5 note. Yep. Could we use coins instead of a $5 note? Yep. So we can put that back. For $5, we can also use two $2 coins. All right. Two plus two is four. So that's $4 and $1 coin. So that there will give you $5, which also equals the $15. And what we've got there is pretty healthy stuff as well and a nice cuddly toy to go home with. Yep. Thank you very much, Mr. Shane. Be a pleasure going shopping with you. Welcome back to part two of Marcus and his mates episode, Marcus Gives Away Change. Well, we last left our character Marcus working at the shops while his uncle was in his office. A lady came to buy some groceries and Marcus rung them up on the till. However, the total amount was not the same as the money she gave. She owed $93.55, but to pay for it, she gave a $100 note, leaving Marcus with the challenge of giving her back some change. Marcus didn't know how to do this, so instead of not being able to figure it out and giving her the wrong change, he decided to call his Uncle Dan for help, who was just about to tell him on the phone how to give customers back the correct amount of change. 
Marcus, in order to find out how much change you owe the customer, you need to do $100 minus $93.55. Then Uncle Dan began to explain. When we are minusing or taking away with large numbers, we sometimes have to do something called borrowing. And it helps to make sure we write this all down. Now borrowing is when we go to our top number in our minus problem and ask them for help by taking some of their numbers away. In our problem, our top number is 100 and we need to start on the right hand side, but we can't do that because we can't subtract anything away from zero. It's already zero, so we've got to borrow from our first available number to the left. And if we look, that's gonna be our number one. When we borrow one away, that one then becomes a zero and we cross it out. Then we move the one over to our next zero, which changes that number from a zero to a 10. But remember, we don't need this one there. We need the one to go all the way back to the very beginning of our sum. So again, we scratch it out. And if we take 10 take away one, we are left with the number nine. Now, we continue to do that all the way down, changing all the zeros into tens, scratching them out, and replacing them with a nine as we're moving our value down our subtraction problem. Eventually, we get to the second last one, we cross it out, 10 take away one is equal to nine, and now we can finally begin. Now, 10 take away five is equal to five, or 10 minus five is equal to five. And then nine take away or minus five is equal to four. Now, nine take away three is equal to six, and finally, nine take away nine is equal to zero, which leaves us with a total of $6.45. As Uncle Dan explained this to Marcus, he realized that he needed to give his customer $6.45 as their change. Good morning, Mr. Dave, how are you? Good, I'm good, Mike. Um, Right, we, we're asking people, why is it important to get the correct change when you're out shopping? It's uh, hard-earned money. So uh, it's your money and uh, you want to save up for things that you want to buy in the future. So Yeah, because we were talking to Kurt earlier on and um, the, the shopkeepers don't always do it on purpose, but you know it's always important to check what, what change you've got. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you just do, do your maths, count it up, you know. If you spend five dollars, make sure you get fifteen dollars back when you got twenty. Maths and the counting is mm. so important nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, because sometimes people forget. <laughs> get your money back so you can keep saving. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music. Today we're going to learn how to make castanets. Alright guys, so what we're going to need to make our own castanets, these are castanets, they're from a country called Spain in Europe and they belong to the percussion family. Okay, so these are the things we're going to need. We're going to need a piece of thick cardboard about this size, a ruler, a hammer, a pen, something to draw around. So what I've got here is the back part of my phone. So it needs to be about the same size as a phone to draw around. A cutting knife. You need four metal bottle tops. Okay, a pair of pliers and some glue. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is draw around a rectangle onto the cardboard. So 
you need to do two of these. So first one like that. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. Now we need to cut them out. So you take your knife, be very careful. It could be very sharp, this one's very sharp. And you can use your ruler to make the line straight. If the cardboard's thick, then go over it twice. And make sure you're on a surface that, you know, doesn't matter if it gets too damaged. Okay, so now you should have two identical rectangles. Now the next thing we need to do is you need to make a line in the middle, okay? So you measure it, get your ruler and measure all the way across. So this one here is 15 centimeters. Now half of 15 is seven and a half. So go along, put a mark there, 7.5, draw a line. Do this on the other one. So seven and a half centimeters there. Draw a line. Now what we need to do now, we need to be very careful because we need to make a cut along that line, but you can't go all the way through the cardboard. You only have to go just a tiny bit. So you have to be very careful. Just make a light groove along there, not too deep. And the reason we do that is so it stays together and we can bend it like this. It's like a duck, quack quack. Can do that on the other one as well. So. Now the next thing we need to do, so put your knife away. You get your bottle tops and then you need to get the pliers and you need to bend them out so they're almost flat. Okay, bend out the sides like this. All right, now once you've done that, you need to grab your hammer and make them a bit more flat. So be very careful you don't bang your fingers when you do this, okay? Now once you've made all those pretty flat, they don't have to be completely flat, so don't worry too much. We need to glue them onto your castanets. Okay. So I'll line them all up, face down. So you're gluing on the back of the, of the bottom top. Now we'll stick them on. Try and get it in the middle of each section. Now we we'll leave those to dry for about six hours and we'll come back later and test them out. All right guys, now the glue has dried on the bottle tops. You can uh, get some sticky tape, roll it up and stick it on there so that it doesn't fall out your hand. So do one on this side and one on that side on both of them. And let's see them in action. Wow. Words of the week. Please. Please. Reason. Re. Sin. Because. Be. Cause. Important. Im. Poor. Tent. 
convince. Con vince. Opinion. A pin yen. Elsa is back from visiting family and she is catching up with Olaf on what he has been doing while she was gone. Hey Olaf, how have you been doing? I've been doing well, Elsa. I had a good time with Sven and Kristoff, but now I'm just a bit sad. Why are you sad? Is it something you want? Are you ill or are you missing someone? Well, it's something I want. Sven, our dog, is a bit lonely, so I want to get him a friend. But when I asked Mum, she said no. Now I don't know what to do. Hmm. You just need to convince Mum. You need to think of some important reasons why Sven will need a friend. That's easy for you to say because you are older than me. I just don't know what to say or how to say it. Could you please explain to me what needs to be done and what I need to say? If you want to convince mum, you have to think about an Oreo. Elsa, I don't want to eat an Oreo. Please stop making jokes. No, Olaf. It's just to help you remember what to say. I just listen to the song and it will help you understand what Oreo is all about. Stevens. I'm here with Yarara LSO Daniel Myers to talk about who he supports as his favorite AFL team. Good afternoon, Daniel. Good afternoon, Ms. Rebecca. So, Mr. Daniel, who is your favorite AFL team? In my opinion, it's the West Coast Eagles. And Mr. Daniel, what are some reasons that you support the West Coast Eagles? My reasons are my uncles and family goes for the West Coast, so my siblings do. And just as the team itself, I think they're a pretty, pretty awesome team. They've got quality players all over the ground, and we're the latest team outside of Victoria to win the grand final. So. Very nice. And Mr. Daniel, can you give us a specific example of where particular team players of the Eagles shone brightly? I would say our defense is pretty good, led by the great Jeremy McGovern. That's who I try and play like. As I said before, we're pretty awesome all over the ground. So, in my opinion, the win-loss record over the last five years has really improved, and that's why the eagle has landed. So, Mr. Daniel's opening opinion was that the West Coast Eagles are the best team. His reasons behind his opinion is that his whole family goes for West Coast, and they are the latest team outside of Victoria to win a grand final. Also that they are just a really awesome team. Mr. Daniel backs up his reasons by saying that the West Coast Eagles have great defense, which is evident through Jeremy McGovern, and that they also have great players across the ground as a whole. He then restates his opinion by saying how in the last five years, the Eagles win loss record has really improved. And that's why in his opinion, the Eagles are the best team. 
So did Mr. Daniel persuade you that the West Coast Eagles are a great team? Were his reasons and his evidence convincing enough that you yourself would consider barracking for the West Coast Eagles? Clontar Fallas returned from Sydney. Hip hop band visit Shirara and Monday night saw the Clontarf end of year awards. Good morning, I'm Gloria with your own news. Clontar Fellas have returned from Sydney. They had a great time in the city and the country town of Tamworth. They caught up with Charlie Ma and the Dubbo boys. They also went out to Lake Keep to partake in canoeing, cooking and conquering the Great Swing. The fellas also visited Bondi Beach and had a talk by Luke McNally, an Aboriginal bodybuilder. All in all, a great time was had by all. And hip-hop artists visited Yurai Chapel Monday morning, spreading the word of God with a twist. We cross to this report. Hi fellas, it's great to have you here. Your music is awesome. Can you tell us about your message? Yes, we can. Thank you, Gloria, for having us. And thank you, Yurara College. We're, uh, Jaden and I are hip-hop uh, duo known as Novi One and Bernsey. We're from Melbourne, Victoria. And uh, basically, really simply, we're just normal dudes that love Jesus. Yes. And we're just telling people about God through hip-hop music. How long are you here for? Our Springs. We are here for eight days. Yeah. So we've only got this week, only got another three days to go. So we're heading back very shortly. Mm. Where are you going? Where are we going, Jane? Um, well, so far we've travelled around Victoria. We've gone through Buninyong. We've travelled to Ballarat to do a few shows at the schools around that area. We've also been up to Mount Jura and performed a performed there. And we've also gone down to Port Augusta. And we've travelled down. Yeah, we've we've travelled down to Rockby down four days. Then we've come here down to Alice Springs, the heart of the heart of Australia. Australia. <laughs> and um, next we're going to Forbes in New South Wales. And also Ningen. Ningen. Yes, Ningen. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of indigenous country. Loving it. It's good. Thank you for your performance on Monday. Yeah. And thank you for having us, Gloria. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time. I'm Gloria, reporting for your own news. Yesterday saw the final game at Yura for the year between the mighty Brumbies and the Magpies. However, we have no results. Yura women's soccer team had another win against the Rangers with their score of 1-0. to Yura's women's basketball team won the match against Mamo Magic with a score of 46-36. to and congratulations to Christella Campbell on her success during the Women's Soccer League. She was awarded the Golden Boot Trophy for being the top goal so scorer in the Women's Comp. Well done, Christella. Now to weather, here's Benedict. For the rest of the term, we can expect the weather to be up in the high 30s with a dash of rain here and there. That's weather. Back to you, Gloria. That's your own news for the 28th of November 2014. Christmas is coming and holidays are upon us. Have a safe time and take care of yourself and families. Have a very Merry Christmas from all of our TV team. Merry Christmas!